In Philadelphia, we get our drinking water from the rivers that are actually flowing through the city. In terms of stormwater, um, if we pollute our land, that water will become polluted as it flows across the land and then flows into our rivers and pollutes our rivers. So that just means that we have to spend a lot more money to treat that water to make it safe and to make it drinkable. And then another issue in Philadelphia and in many older cities is to have what is called a combined sewer system. And that is a single pipe, essentially, that collects all of the household sewage as well as stormwater. It collects all of that and takes it down to a treatment plant where it's cleaned up before that water is released back into the rivers. The problem is, if it's raining heavy, there's not enough capacity in the system. And it's designed to overflow into the rivers and streams, primarily so we don't cause basement backups and backups into the streets. So there is an efficiency there in having these overflows, but remember that's untreated sewage mixed with stormwater. So that's quite unhealthy. Philadelphia is about 60% combined sewer, 40% separate sewer system. The separate sewer system means there's two separate pipes, one just for the sewage, and then another set of pipes that's just for stormwater. A lot of people assume that must be better, but because stormwater itself can become so highly polluted by picking up all the pollutants that are on the ground, unless that water is treated in some way before it's released into our rivers and streams, it is causing significant water quality impairments. The other problem is the amount of water that goes into those creeks. The amount of water in the creeks themselves changes dramatically when it rains. So we go from having a very shallow creek to suddenly having this flash flooding creek every time it rains. The banks of the creek erode, it washes away the habitat for the fish and the bugs and everything that lives in there and so what you end up with is a stream that really can't sustain life. Stormwater is probably one of the biggest issues that Philadelphia has in terms of the pollution of the creeks. Really one of the major challenges to all of our urban streams is the amount of development that occurs. The whole watershed was once a green, natural area. As development occurred, we buried many of the tributaries to our streams. We also paved over the natural land with streets, with pavements, with buildings, with sidewalks so that rainwater can no longer infiltrate into the soil, but now it's concentrated flow. So it hits the pavement, hits the street. You have a large quantity of flow going into those storm drains, which often feed directly into pipes, which discharge into the creek. So really the challenge for us is to sort of recreate areas in our urban watersheds that are naturalized again, or at least mimic what nature once did. We're proposing a combination of conventional infrastructure and green infrastructure to address the, the issue of stormwater management. Conventional infrastructure really refers to what we've been doing now for a couple hundred years, and that is kind of building pipes. What most cities in the United States are doing to address their combined sewer overflow issues are building bigger pipes, big storage tanks to capture all of that excess flow storing it until there's capacity in the system again, then having to pump out all of that back into the system so it can get to the treatment plant and get cleaned up. Here in Philadelphia, we think that it would be much better for us to pursue a different approach, and that is green infrastructure, which essentially is rebuilding our city over time in ways that help to manage the stormwater. That could be redesigning streets and the sidewalks so that the water can be managed closer to where it falls. Planting trees in different ways so they can manage the water. Redesigning parks to help manage runoff. Schools. It could be using different kinds of pavements so that the water can actually soak through it into the ground below. And so it's a very long-term vision of making the city much greener really reconnecting back to that natural cycle, letting the water soak into the ground, and in essence, trying to keep out as much water from our sewer system as possible. The main goal is to capture the first inch of storm water of any storm, and that's why it is kept on the site versus being just sheet off. It would sheet off and then it would go into the streets and then into the sewer systems. 
and then that would travel down to the rivers, and then you're getting erosion, you're getting pollutants into the rivers, the Schuylkill and the Delaware. So that's what we're trying to cut back and diminish, and this is why we're trying to implement these green management practices. Philadelphia, it's one of a few cities in the United States which has decided to rely upon urban greening as uh, the fundamental, if not the primary, uh, approach to addressing compliance with the Clean Water Act, which has to do with cities discharging high volumes of contaminated water to the receiving rivers. Philadelphia has the best integrated, most uh, intelligent, uh, far-sighted um, approach to public policy when it comes to city greening. It provides a combination of requirements, but also positive incentives. If you're a commercial entity, you can reduce the cost of discharging stormwater by building a green roof or another green measure. You can comply with some of the stormwater requirements by removing 20% of your impervious area from the sewer watershed. There are tax advantages. The city, in many cases, will provide free engineering services to entities which voluntarily decide to do this. So uh, it's a whole package of policies that are being implemented by various departments, but all actually work together. These green solutions to solving the stormwater problem don't just solve stormwater. They create beauty, they create parks, they create shade, they create better air quality. They, there's so many other ways that these projects benefit the city on top of the stormwater issue, which is an important issue, that it just seems like an obvious solution. There are so many studies now that point to the importance of green space, especially in urban areas. You know, they talk about what brings uh, young people to a city, what keeps people staying in a city, and often people point to recreational opportunities, the opportunity to get into natural areas, to hike, to run. And I think the city and our suburban neighbors are recognizing the importance of protecting and preserving our existing green spaces and really protecting the quality of those and looking for opportunities to engender more of these green open spaces. Whatever site you're working on, do it very well and have it successful. And I don't think that the city of Philadelphia is trying to do too much at one time, but what they are doing, they're doing well. I think the water department is doing a great job of kind of spearheading that program and making that happen. So it's in, the, in, in its first phase, in its first stages. Um, there are lessons that have been learned, and I think it's on a good, healthy road, and I think the next phase is on the horizon. With proper funding, good people in place, with good community involvement, I think it can go a long, long way. This is a quintessential community enterprise. It's really all about the culture, vision, capacity to stick with a long-range, multi-administration, multi-generational program that has a vision for what a city can be. And maybe we're mature now enough as a city to really make that type of investment. <laughs>